morning, welcome to another uh, Treadview video podcast. Uh, driving today through Glenwood Canyon. Pretty nice drive in western Colorado, right next to the Colorado River. And uh, lots of turns, nice, uh, nice spot to film. Uh, I thought I'd talk today a little bit about um, the concept of... Uh, where we're headed with energy, I read a lot of investment blogs and uh, energy blogs, discussions, forums, and there's a thing called peak oil that probably very few people are familiar with, and uh, I think it's a it's a key concept to understand and be aware of as you make your vehicle uh, decisions, your uh, tire decisions, and where we're headed. Um, Two things are making this are, are leveraging the importance of energy costs right now. One is our financial crisis that's been ongoing since 2008. The other is the oil supply situation in the world. And it's not like we're uh, the peak oil theory is that not that we're going to run out of oil uh, anytime soon, but we're running out of cheap oil, easy to access, inexpensive oil. And as a result, oil is going to get more and more expensive. And if you want to think about it simply, all you need to look at is the supply production curve for oil over the last 15 or 20 years. And you'll notice that it's flattening out. And then you compare that to population, and we know that population in the world is moving up geometrically or basically it's some value that's not linear in a curve value, curve fashion. So you've got energy supplies at best moving up arithmetically, which is in a straight line or relatively straight line or even flat line almost, with population going up exponentially in somewhat of a parabolic fashion. So the result of that means that no matter what happens, just because of population growth and energy supply lack of growth, we're going to have higher energy costs. Now, factor in the current economic situation in the United States and the world of basically endless debt spending. And by the way, I support Ron Paul. He's the only guy that's going to make our country work right, I think. Think of endless uh, debt spending and what that means for the world, uh, the governments of the world, and how they're going to have to uh, manipulate currencies in order to fund these deficits. And basically, what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to print money in so many, so many words. They may do it, may call it quantitative easing or all kinds of other things. But essentially, the net result is going to be that you're going to see your own costs in your life going up. And as you probably are very well aware, food costs are going up. Energy costs have been generally going up over the last 10 years or so. And we can see it in our everyday lives. You don't need me to tell you the rationale behind it. You just need to understand that it's happening. So with that in mind, discussing like, hey, what kind of vehicles we want to purchase in the future? What kind of uh, tires we want to have? And, and why is that important? Um, one of the reasons I drive the car I'm driving, yeah, the Saab uh, 9.3 Sport Combi, is because it gets great fuel economy, yet it still has excellent performance for the amount of uh, economy it gets. Um, depending on what I'm doing, I can average uh, in the 30s easily on the highway, yet it's 210 horsepower. It'll go 0 to 60 in like 7 seconds or under 7 seconds. And you want to start thinking about vehicles and things like that that are going to let you get the most efficiency. And the reason I got into snow tires and, and started Tread Review actually came out of a desire to save energy because I was trying to, I have a Suburban that uses a lot of gas and I was driving my kids to a lot of ski races and I wanted to find a way to get to the ski races but not spend $100 each way in gas. Uh, driving all over Colorado and so I ended up picking a lot of uh, I've tried uh, Volkswagen Passat I've tr I tried a lot of wagons uh, but Volkswagen Passat Volvo wagon 
uh, Saab sport combi that I'm driving now. Of all of them, I prefer the Volvo wagon the most. But all of them represent different, you know, options of European cars. They're all pretty thrifty, all pretty fuel, uh, pretty fun to drive, you know, drive well, all have good uh, performance. Just cleaning off the window here. And I really think that if you're thinking intelligently about where the future uh, is headed for America and our energy costs and our cost of living, that wagons, maybe minivans, are going to be where you're going to want to have most of your driving done if you're a family person. SUVs and trucks are just going to become prohibitively expensive unless you can afford a uh, plug-in hybrid of some, ver of some type. But for the average person, most uh, plug-in hybrids are going to be so expensive with falling standards of living that it, it's going to be very difficult for people to afford a vehicle like that uh, and purchase gas. And I fully expect, based on peak oil, for us to see energy costs, oil, you know, gasoline costs, upwards of $5 uh, a gallon in the not that far, uh, not that distant future, maybe a year or two. And it's just going to get worse. Um, so think about that when you're buying a vehicle. Try to get something that's going to give you the most efficiency, still have good performance, good capability. And uh, if you want to learn more about peak oil, I'd recommend uh, this website called The Oil Drum, which is an outstanding website. If you want to learn more about financial crisis and what's going on, I'd recommend zerohedge.com or the market ticker. Dot com or dot org but uh, so anyway think about your uh, you know if you if you've got a one thing I've tried to hint at in some of my things is you can take a car with good snow tires on it and you can outperform an SUV that does not have snow tires easily in the weather in the snow and so that it allows you to still have that ability to get where you need to go in the winter uh, without any problems without having to, you know, only get 13 or 15 or 16 miles per gallon or whatever it might be in your uh, SUV. Now granted, it's hard to beat the size and capability of hauling that an SUV gives you. And if you're truly looking to haul a lot of people or cargo, then an SUV may still, or a truck, may be the only way to go to do it. I know when we got to haul a lot of stuff, uh, the whole family to a ski race where we're taking multiple pairs of skis and things like that, then, you know, sometimes a Suburban is indispensable and there's just no other option. But you want to think about, hey, how can I have a vehicle? And, and what I've tried to think about is m trying to make myself multi-purpose. You know, having the fuel-efficient wagon or something like that for when, hey, it's a short trip, we don't have a lot of stuff uh, to take, or it could be a long trip and there's only a couple people going. It's like the, spur the Volvo wagon or a Saab wagon or something like that works great. A truck or suburban when you have to haul a lot of stuff then okay that's the way it is you got to take that but at least you have the flexibility to control kind of where you put your fuel expenses um, another recommendation I have and I'm not a registered financial advisor so this is just an idea here but if you invest in oil companies I think you're gonna do well in the future in general uh, because they will uh, you'll be making money uh, as they're uh, as they benefit from rising oil prices and um, it'll help offset some of the higher energy costs you have to pay. So that's it for Tread Review. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.